The reporter Michael Hastings has died today at the age of 33. Michael was killed in a car wreck in Los Angeles early this morning. It was announced by his employer BuzzFeed tonight. Michael Hastings will be remembered nationally, of course, for his blockbuster story in Rolling Stone magazine in June 2010 about the off-hours behavior of General Stanley McChrystal and his top advisors. The story led to the resignation of General McChrystal, who was then the commander of the U.S. war in Afghanistan. There used to be a liberal talk radio network in this country called Air America Radio. I worked there from its inception starting in 2004. And by 2006 or so, even though the network was a financial mess and a mess in a lot of other ways, um, we were still attracting really good, interesting people to come work with us. And one of those people was young and smart and interesting with tons of options who nevertheless came to work for us, even though we were a mess. Uh, one of the people who came to work for us um, was a young woman named, uh, a young woman from Perry, Ohio named Andy Parhamovich. And it was through Andy, my friendship with Andy, that I first met Michael. And when Andy left Air America Radio, it was because she went to Iraq. She left to go to Iraq at the height of the Iraq War. She was working for the National Democratic Institute, and she was ambushed and killed in central Baghdad. She was returning from a training session on electoral politics and the role of political parties, and the convoy she was in was ambushed and she was killed. I'm on the advisory board of the Andy Leadership Institute for Young Women, which was set up in her name to further the kinds of things that Andy believed in and that she gave her life for. Michael Hastings was Andy's boyfriend when she died. He was also living in Baghdad at the time. He was writing for Newsweek magazine. And he was just devastated when she was killed. When he came back to New York for the memorial that we held for Andy, I literally did not know who he was as I stood there talking to him, even though I knew him pretty well. I could not recognize him face to face. He was so contorted with grief. Michael wrote a wrenching book about that. His first book was called I Lost My Love in Baghdad. And some people loved the book. Uh, some people hated the book for it being so personal and so emotional and so angry. But that really was the whole point, and that's why he did it. Michael was angry. He was also loving and thoughtful and constructive and brilliant, but he was angry about things that weren't right in the world. He was angry with things that were right in the world and with war and with loss, and that drove his reporting. And it made him fearless when he realized he had found something important that he could report. A lot of people in the news business want to seem unafraid. Michael Hastings was actually unafraid, to the point where he radiated a sort of energy that made you realize he was unafraid and it made you treat him different than other people in the business. I remember talking with Michael the night that his Rolling Stone story on General McChrystal popped here. He was in Afghanistan at the time. He's about to head out on an embed. And I was trying to talk to him into the, uh, uh, trying to talk to him about what he had just done and trying to talk to him into the idea that, that he might want to make his way out of the war zone he was in before the moment at which his reporting would cause the firing of the very popular man who was running that war that he was in the middle of. But Michael was in Kandahar that night and Michael stayed. He went out on the embed. He was unafraid. That merciless reporting he did on General McChrystal and his staff became the book The Operators. Michael's merciless reporting on the presidential campaign became the book Panic 2012, the sublime and terrifying inside story of Obama's final campaign. Michael did not write to make friends with the people he covered, although he sometimes did. He wrote and reported in a way that was meant to be unvarnished and actually what he meant to convey, no matter if it bothered people to hear it. I think what I've tried to demonstrate, and without seeming like too much of a, you know, jerk, is that you can do this kind of reporting. Like, if you're a young reporter out there, you can do this kind of reporting. You can be uncompromising and hard-hitting and fair and accurate and honest, and you can still, uh, you get, people will pick up the phone again. Yeah, and fair and accurate and honest being key to it, because you will be attacked with everything they've got. And so you better be absolutely right and have nailed down every single detail and sourced everything and crossed every T and dotted every I. Bombs away, bring it on. You yeah. know, <laughs> as, as our former president once said, you know, this is, this, this is the, the, uh, the joy of reporting. Michael Hastings did not write to make friends. But if you were his friend, he was an inspiring and exciting and original and deeply lovable guy. He was angry and he was hardworking. He was also very sweet. Michael Hastings loved his wife, Elise. Uh, he loved his native Vermont. He loved reporting. And he died today at the age of 33.